Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. It's a pleasure to speak to you. How are you today? Good. Good. Thank you. Good, good, good. good. Um, maybe you can begin with a brief introduction to this amazing new series, Borders. Um, maybe you can give me a bit of the, the elevator pitch. You know, what can people expect and, and why should they tune in to watch this amazing new show? You can expect laughs. Mm. You can expect more laughs. Mm. <laughs> um, and you can also expect some uh, food for thought, some food for thought. It might, it might have you going away between episodes, having a bit of a think. Yeah, definitely give it a watch. I think it's worth the watch. When I was watching it, I thought, you know, it just felt really original. It's something I hadn't seen before, but also kind of capturing something in the zeitgeist at the moment of kind of using irreverent humour and satire to kind of look at privilege and, and class, which is still such a, a big thing in British society. Um, when you first read that script, what excited you guys about it? And, and why did you want to jump on board? Yeah, no, the, the, the realness of it, that's, that's what excited me most personally. I don't know about everybody else, but like the realness of it. And, and as you say, like there, there's been a real trend in TV where satire is used to expose or not expose, but show privilege and stuff like that in shows like The White Lotus and Succession recently. The, these, these people do exist. It is satire, but they do exist and it's real. So I feel like with Borders, it's the first time in the UK that we're really using that format in such an effective way as well, because the ways that are shown, like the raw moments that are shown are really raw and really effective, but can also be funny at times. So it's, I feel like it's it's a happy medium and it's a good balance and people are going to watch it, digest it and, and love it, in my opinion. I, I agree with that too. Um, I think, it, yeah, I the whole, like just the realness and the, the truth of the script was, yeah, spoke, fair to say, to a lot of us. Um, and like, it was just something I was like, okay, yeah, the, the satirical element really draws out the imperfections of... Um, certain systems and environments um even personal character flaws but it, it it does it in a funny way um so like it's it, it's digestible safe to say it's very digestible mm -hmm. but it allows you to think like Seku was saying you go away and you take some thought you're like oh, okay wow um is this what we we live in and this is what we do and am i a part of that so yeah i think that's what it does. And maybe you want to go around and just tell us a bit about each of your characters. Um, and I guess in what ways could you perhaps relate to the person you play? Um, how were they very different? Um, you know, was it a challenge to play them? How did you kind of get under the skin? Um, I play Leah um, and she's, she's really cool. She's smart. She's upfront. Um, she's so justice driven. Um, and I feel like you can feel her presence like wherever you are and you'll see in the show like her presence is almost automatically filled as soon as she steps into St Gilbert's. Um, I feel like we do have that kind of similar mindset when it comes to like her interests. Um, she's quite opinionated and she's not really too afraid to say that and I do like to say that it's quite similar to me. Um, I do think she's a bit more upfront than I am about it which I really enjoyed embodying. She's very talented on the piano, which is something that I had to get back into because I thought I was never going to touch a piano from when I stopped it doing music GCSE. <laughs> so um, that was really interesting. And yeah, I think Leah's really cool and we are similar. She's just a younger, cooler version, I'd say. Um, Omar is a caring, creative kid. Um, he's very much into his art. He sees the 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 best in people which is endearing but that can also leave him put him in a position where people can manipulate and abuse him and so you know it was very interesting tapping into that naivety and seeing the world in rose tinted glasses i also think he's quite because he's so introverted and i'm so extrovert that's something i had to tap into and the whole thing about him, um, he he goes through this journey where he realizes there's more to life than just being in my own space. So tapping into that, as well as learning how to draw a bit, which I cannot do to save my life, was fun. I'd say I'd say Jaheem is um, somebody who was he kind of has two sides of him. 
and he was molded into being one way in his environment. On the other flip side, he's actually a very smart and vulnerable kid. And and we really see that come to light when he goes to St. Gilbert's and and uh, it, it's, it allows him to grow in that. And he's also just finding himself. So it's a very confusing time. He's just, he's just trying to take it step by step. And obviously obstacles get in the way, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's how the story goes. Femi, uh, he's a British Nigerian has a lot of pressure to do well and I I can relate to him. I'm half Nigerian, half Sierra Leonean. Um so I understand the pressure which he undergoes in order to do well. Yeah. Um I think he's he's someone that goes through a journey of uh morality um and what it means to assimilate and what that cost um in order to get ahead. Toby's just like a kid at a sweet shop. He's like Bambi before Bambi learns to walk. When Bambi's born and Bambi's got like just wobbling everywhere and you feel sorry for Bambi and slipping and that. That's what I feel like Toby's like. And not in the way that you look at Bambi like, oh, it's a cute little deer. You might not look at Toby as so cute and and cuddly. You might look at him as quite annoying, actually. But that's how I saw it is that he's just this kid trying to find his way. And he's not afraid to fall over to find his way. So, um. How how did I relate him to me? Uh, there's loads of things that I could say. I could draw parallels between my life and his. There's also things that I can't draw those parallels, and I have to look for that that energy elsewhere. Yeah, I don't I don't think I'll go too much into what we have similar. But one thing I will say, and all five of the leads have this in similar, and I would say all five of us as as artists, as actors, have this in similar as well, is all five of the characters have this superpower. For Toby, it's him and his languages. For Leah, it's her and her instruments. For Omar, it's him and his art. For Jaheem, it's him and his um, technology right, but, skills, programming okay. skills. And then Femi... <laughs> we know you're black. There's <laughs> 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 a joke in the show that Femi, Femi <laughs> don't quite know his superpower. That's one of the jokes in the show. But I was saying, and we and us as actors and artists, we have our superpower. And like, yeah, that's one thing I'll say. Definitely, we can all relate to, and a lot of people can relate to. They've got a lot of people have that one thing that they feel like is 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 their thing, and that's powerful. That's powerful. Absolutely. I was going to bring that up, actually. I was like, I think there are just so many witty lines and like little moments and details thrown in that are just so funny. You know, even from the opening scene where you're going to put a poster in the cafe and like yeah. you're talking about gentrification or, you know, the yeah. mom's got the Black Lives Matter sticker on a car. I think at someone at some point says, oh, you know, he's going to be prime minister in a matter of years. Did you have a favorite moment or a favorite line, you know, and then did you, how did you not sort of crack up sometimes? <laughs> we did. I think Priya and Chelsea, um, the guys who played the PR, like twins, they were amazing. Like they were absolute comedians and they would often like throw in these extra lines that were just so unhinged. And so like, we weren't expecting it. The, our live reactions would literally be like, what? what did he say so um I think that was like a great moment like I think the improv and this is a talent like the talent that was on that set was crazy so it did make it really hard to sometimes stay composed because everyone was just really really funny oh I've got I've got mine it, it took me a while to get there but I've got mine every absurd thing that Rupert aka Harry Gilby says in this show I love it's so it's so mad, but it's just so funny. And it's so real, but it's so funny. Like some people are actually like that and they'll just come out with some some heinous stuff. But it's just so on the nose the way he does it in such a like dismissive way that it just makes me laugh every time. I wasn't there for most of the lines he said, but watching it back, um, it makes me laugh all the time. I think they're my favorite moments. So some of my favorite moments are with um the rascals. That's uh Cheddar. That's Archie, um, Andrew, and Edgar, but their names are different in the show. Um, yeah, it was just funny. It was it was hilarious. Really stupid moments, like really dumb 
moments that we we just um bounced off each other though um because we've all kind of come from the same type of place and training so we was able to really like bounce off and feed each other and just like improvise and go off and have the freedom to do that so yeah um i think a lot of my moments there are like quite fun you know in terms of the takeaways from watching it i mean i mean there were also serious bits you know underneath kind of the irreverent humor you know some moments of violence and the sort of emotional toll that it's taking on these young kids going to this school um and you know a lot of sort of prevalent you know re relevant issues like race class privilege but how do you think maybe having that kind of humor allows you to think about those issues in a completely different way. And I guess by making people laugh, um, they might reconsider that their views on it, you know, whereas a lot of debate at the moment seems very polarized, very serious. There's a lot about mm. culture wars these days. Is it quite healthy to be able to laugh about these things too? Yeah, I think it's healthy to see, see the light and darken them. I think um, the situations are so shocking that it sometimes that's, can make it comedy because you're, as a viewer, you're watching it like, no way, this is real. Um, and then that's what makes it funny. Um, I think the writers did a really good way in balancing balancing that because obviously you don't want to make these like serious issues seem trivial, but also you don't want to make it like a trauma watch for people. Um, so I think having borders towing the line between the two is very refreshing. People... Uh, we'll still be entertained, but we'll also learn a lot from it. So I think it's really good that we've got, we've created that piece of art for people to really digest. Yeah, I think that's the that's the that's the main one that I think Aruna said it earlier. Like it makes it a lot a, a lot more digestible. Mm. Um, if it's serious, like I feel like we see every, all of that every day, like all the serious blah 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 blah, and it becomes blah 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 blah. And goes in and out like that once it's done one too many times and it's just that so now putting it in this new format and making it more digestible people are going to laugh and then be like oh okay wait that's actually kind of mad let's let's think about that mm. so that's where the co conversations are going to stem from and, and and i'm really looking forward to hearing those conversations well thank you so much for sharing all that with me